All right. Welcome, everybody, to OK Zoomer, Zoom interviews with creative engineers and more. Uh, I'm your host, Aaron Lichtig. I'm a Zometry guy, former Jeopardy champion, and uh, excited to welcome our first guest today. Um, our first guest is Sarah Gerke, who is a dedicated 3D printing journalist. She's been doing this now for six or seven years. Um, she was the editor-in-chief of 3dprint.com. She now runs a, a company called Additive Integrity, which is an additive manufacturing focused editorial company. Um, she also has written for publications like Fabaloo, Forbes, All3DP, as well as worked with many industry clients. So she has a lot of expertise in additive manufacturing, 3D printing, and where that industry is headed. Um, and Sarah's also on the board of directors of Women in 3D Printing. So welcome, Sarah. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Aaron. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, so first, uh, tell us a little more about Additive Integrity. Well, I launched Additive Integrity in 2018 to address the content needs for the additive manufacturing industry. Since I'm so focused on messaging and content and writing, um, I always kind of tell people I'm not an engineer, but my expertise is translating engineering for lay people and for anyone to understand. So I work with media publications. Fabulo is my primary client. I'm the managing editor there. I also work with some of the publications you mentioned, as well as clients within the industry themselves, doing blogs, white papers, case studies, um, increasingly moderating webinars and that kind of thing, and just really adapting to the content needs of the 3D printing industry to keep up with everyone and kind of maintain a bird's eye view of what's going on. So what got you interested in 3D printing to begin with? I like to tell everyone that obviously I would end up in 3D printing. I have degrees in theater and English. Basically, it was a complete fluke is what happened. Um, I've worked in manufacturing since I graduated college, first as a temp job, and then in industry research where I became an editor and industry analyst. And just when I was looking for a new job, I was kind of throwing out feelers everywhere in uh, 2014 and I happened to land at 3dprint.com and then started there as an editor and writer and quickly discovered, especially as I stepped into leadership on that site, that this wasn't a job for me. It really became a career and something that I loved. So I fell into it and got really, really lucky. That's great. Now we're, we're in a period of time where a lot of things are changing quickly. Um, what are some of the biggest trends that are out there that you think will have an impact on additive manufacturing? The single biggest thing I'm seeing happen that I think is really important for driving the future of this industry is collaboration. We've had so many disparate technologies and different companies really leading the way in individual segments in both polymer and metal 3D printing, as well as all of the other uh, materials that can be printed these days. But what's really going to drive everything is working together, partnerships, especially between hardware and software and materials companies, even between uh, companies that are historically competitors, since especially right now, we're kind of talking in the middle of a pandemic, hopefully the middle, hopefully we're not still so at the beginning of it. But by working together, it's what's really going to drive this forward because 3D printing is ultimately a tool and identifying the right tool for the right job is what's really going to drive the realities forward here. And industrialization is the single biggest thing happening. What I like to say anytime I uh, have a speaking engagement on my own, kind of a keynote or any panel sort of thing, I like to drive the realities of 3D printing as a boring technology because when this is all boring is when it gets real. Yeah, so a boring technology. You know, ideally, because I'm sitting in a chair at a desk right now and I don't really think about how they were made. So when we can use 3D printing to make things and not think, oh, this is 3D printed, it must be magic, it's the future. You know, it's just how things are made. And that to me is boring and that to me is real. So when it becomes not just cool, but also commonplace. Right, it's when we really get over that hype hump because we're still enduring some of that hype and we've all seen the hype curve, we've all seen the cycles. And it's cool to make Yoda heads, but it's rad to make parts that fly on rockets. Agreed, the Yoda heads are pretty cool. I can't pretend I don't have any. Now, speaking of cool stuff, uh, 
not Yoda heads, but cool stuff that is actually more manufacturing oriented. What are some of the, the coolest or, or best applications of additive manufacturing that you've seen recently? The hard part about doing what I do and writing about this day in and day out is that at this point, picking a favorite application is really picking a favorite child, which is much easier in real life. I only have one child. <laughs> but in 3D printing, there are so many things happening that it's almost impossible to kind of identify just one. But I mentioned rocket engines, and I've been doing a lot of work with aerospace lately. Um, and so paying attention to some of that and the collaborations that 3D printing is seeing in aerospace for critical need flying parts is really incredible to me. And so right now I'd say anything in aerospace, medical, or any heavily regulated industry where this new technology is really meeting and exceeding the needs for regulatory clearance is incredible to me. I think that's just really in line with the realities we're talking about and seeing these things become real, become not a fluke. And um, obviously everything being made to address the COVID-19 pandemic, um, we're seeing fast paced FDA clearance for emergency use and that sort of clearance is just really vital. So anything for me, I'm gonna have to really highlight the things that stand up to standard certifications. So we're looking at ISO, FDA, any of those. I think it's fantastic to see uses that are, you know, meeting and exceeding those needs. Excellent. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of that too. The the more aerospace oriented applications for 3D printing, as well as, you know, obviously a lot more and different things coming down the pike in medical that are that are COVID related. Now, you know, switching gears to our final question, um, what piece of advice would you have for someone who wants to learn more about 3D printing, wants to consider additive manufacturing as a career? Where, what, what would you advise them to do? I'm going to go ahead and be a little bit biased with my answer here and just say read everything you can. And I'm, I obviously work with several publications, so I'm very happy to highlight those. But of course, I always tell everyone, if you're only reading what one source public publishes, you're not doing it right. If you're only reading what I write, if you only read what my colleagues write, you're doing it wrong. Read everything you can and just really kind of dig into it, dig in deep, um, start scratching the surface with some of the mainstream media, pick up what some of the big headline things are but then dig into those industry specific resources, look at companies, white papers, look at all of the you know, deep use things that you can do and just to start really get a grip on what's possible today and then see what sparks your interest, what really catches your fancy. If you're into metals, look at all of the metal technologies. If you're into polymers, obviously look on the plastic side. If you're more cutting edge, there's bioprinting. And there are resources available for all of those. And frankly, one of the nice things that we're seeing right now with all of this uh, virtualization of everything we're doing is there are webinars everywhere. There are resources everywhere. So just sit down at your computer, throw something in Google and see what turns up. Excellent, that is great advice. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciated all your insight on 3D printing, additive manufacturing and, and where things are heading. Um, make sure to Google Sarah's name, look for her work across a wide range of publications. She's a great writer. She's a great thought leader in, in this industry. Um, and Sarah, thank you so much. Uh, audience, please um, keep looking for our videos. We should have one up every day or two over the next few weeks. Um, we appreciate you listening and uh, tune in next time. Thank you.